Who doesn't love a stargazer lily? And if you've ever wanted to paint one using watercolour, then now you can because in this video I'm going to show you how. Okay, let's talk about materials really, really quickly. I'm using this watercolour block by Etcher, and as you can see, it comes with a black cover like this. You need to remove this before you start doing your drawing. And as you can see here, I've already done a really simple outline of the lily like this. Now, this is a frame that I've drawn around it. It's 10 by 12 centimeters, just to give you an idea of the size. And this is how I trace down my drawings. Now, don't worry. You can, of course, draw your drawings freehand if you want to, but we do supply you with a free reference photograph and simple outline to work from. And I'll tell you later on how you can have access to these. Okay, these are the colors that I've swatched out today. Remember that you can use any colours that you have within your own kit. You don't have to use exactly the same as me, but I have Permanent Rose, Carmine, Quinacridone Burnt Orange, Perilean Violet, Cadmium Lemon and Sap Green. Um, I've mixed a few colours together here as you can see. These little palettes from Etcher are perfect for watercolour and they don't stain and all the materials I'm going to be using today I will of course list in the description box underneath this video. These beautiful brushes were sent to me by Etcher and I'm going to be using probably three of these, a number six, a number three and a number one or a number zero along with my synthetic flat brush, which helps with blending. I have some kitchen paper, a clean glass of water, and we are good to go. Now, as you can see, I've done a really simple line drawing of the lily like this, and we're going to start by mixing a watery mix of permanent rose. It needs to be really watery, and I'm going to be using my number six brush from Etcher to apply the water to the areas that I want to drop the paint into. This is called wet in wet, so we are going to be applying this really carefully just to the areas where we want this really pale pink color. Now, if you are new to watercolor, I highly recommend that you watch this video all the way through because you can see that tricky phase unfold. We call it the ugly duckling stage, and it's that called that for a reason. I've applied the water where I want to drop the pink tone in and I'm dropping in that permanent rose and it naturally spreads onto the wet paper like this. Make sure that you keep out of the central part where we have this kind of yellowy tone. Uh, you don't want that paint to go there. This is just our first wash where we want that very pale pink colour to be applied. Notice as the paint settles, I'm just using the tip of my number six brush here to push it into the little nooks and crannies where it hits the pencil line. It's really important that your pencil drawing is really tidy. You don't want any sketchy edges. It's just going to be a guide where you're going to put your paint. So try to keep it as clean as you can. And by tracing down your drawing, it really helps with the, um, just keeping it nice and tidy for you. You can see I'm just using a pattern motion here with my brush. I'm cleaning my brush in the tiny little puddle of water that I have here on my palette, dabbing it on my kitchen paper to take off the excess water and then just blending it through like this. Carrying on dropping in that paint. Remember this is just our first wash and everything needs to be dry before we can apply subsequent washes. But of course, for now, we're just getting our first layer on. You'll notice how I'm leaving a white mark around the outside of every petal. It's really important that you don't take your colour right the way to the edge in this instance because there is a little bit of a gap on the side there. Talking about line joins and reference photographs, this beautiful photograph was taken by one of our group members, um, Cynthia. Thank you very much for letting us use this photograph. Um, Cynthia has been a member of our Facebook group for quite some time, and actually we did a tutorial on her beautiful pet. You can see here, if you want to click through to that video and have a look later on, um, you can of course do so. But thank you once again for letting us use this um, beautiful photograph to work from. While we're waiting for the petals to dry, I have mixed sap green here, and I'm just going to take this all over the leaf as you can see here. This is wet on dry, which means I'm applying the paint directly onto the watercolor paper. Thank you. 
using the tip of my brush to take it right to that edge there. I really like the composition of this lily. I think it looks really modern and contemporary and I've sort of added a little bit of a stem on the upper part there as you can see. Now I'm taking this colour all over the green elements. I'm not too worried at the moment about the colour. We can adjust that later. It's just so we know where our pink tones go and our green tones go and all of that stuff. This is my number two flat synthetic brush and I'm just using this dry to blend in any sort of untidy edges. When watercolour dries it leaves a kind of tide mark and we just want to blend that out. I'm just using my water in the middle of my palette, just damp, patting it on my kitchen paper and then blending it through like this and you can see how it gets rid of that really untidy edge. You can use any brush to do this, but I really like the flat synthetic brush. I ought to mention that the brushes that I use are all synthetic. Just rubbing that brush over really lightly gets rid of all those hard edges. So now that our first wash is dry, I'm just adding some more pigment to the existing colour that I have here. This is still permanent rose, but this time with a lot less water. Now it's really important that your first wash is dry before you do this, so you'll need to let that first pink tone dry completely before applying the second layer. By doing this, it will mean that your first wash isn't lifted off and you can start to build up your colours to give your beautiful plant a lot more colour and vibrancy. Now this time, I'm using the tip of my number three brush to apply it straight to the paper, wet on dry. Once I've applied the paint, you can see me cleaning my brush and my small puddle of water on my palette, like this, patting it on my kitchen paper, and then blending it through like this. It's really, really important that you pat your brush dry before blending, otherwise with the water on your brush, it will just uh, move your watercolour paint that you've applied on your paper and make it bloom. And you don't want that, so it's really important that you clean, pat, and then blend. You can see that I'm not taking the watercolour paint this time all over the first wash. We want an idea of that lighter tone to still be present. So just take this colour, some of the way, but not all of the way over. And I'll continue this process on all of the other petals. Now at the start of this video, I mentioned that we supply you with a line drawing to work from and a reference photograph for all of our videos here on YouTube, and of course, including this one. And if you'd like to know how, you, we have a couple of ways, and here's how. A couple of ways that you can access our free reference photographs and line drawings. We have our very own private Facebook group, and as a member, you can access all of them here. There is another way, and I'll tell you about that in a moment. And in case you're not a Facebook fan, and I know it's not for everybody, I just want to reassure you that our group is really friendly, really helpful and informative and you can also post up your finished paintings and have feedback from me and our other group members. You can see here some of the completed works in the student gallery. Having positive feedback from your paintings is a great way to learn and a really amazing confidence booster. If this is something that interests you, I'll put a link to the Facebook group in the description underneath this video. But if Facebook really isn't for you, then don't worry because I'll put a screenshot of the line drawing and the reference photograph right at the end of this video. So be sure to stay right until the end and you can print it off that way. So stay right until the end of this video because I'll put a screenshot of the reference photograph and the simple line drawing so that you can pause the video and print it off that way. So you can see me here just leaving little gaps here and there using my damp brush and just blending it into the paper like this.
Now that everything's dry, I've mixed a thicker mix of carmine. If you don't have carmine, you could carry on using your permanent rose, but I felt that carmine had a slightly darker value and um, it works rather well on top of the washes that we've already applied. As I said earlier, it's really important that the initial washes are now dry. Notice how you can see this color building up to give some form to each of the petals. I'm following my reference photograph as closely as I can and I'm pulling out this paint like this, just using my number three size, sorry, this is my number one size brush, just kind of using this wiggly motion to create some shape here. And as always, I will clean my brush and pat it dry before blending out. If you're, if you're new to my channel and you're wondering why I'm using my puddle in the middle of my palette and not my water jar, it's quite simply because by cleaning your brush in the water jar means that it can flood your brush with water and it will run down the ferrule of the brush, which will flood eventually onto your paper. So by having this little puddle in the middle of a palette, it's a super easy way of making you have better control of your painting. You can see the kind of movement that I'm using here to blend that in. Make sure that your brush is just very, very damp and you can just add a little bit more if you need to like this. Every Tuesday here on YouTube, we release new content for mostly botanical paintings, but we do have one or two other things as well. But if botanical painting is your thing and you really like to level up, we do also have a Patreon, so let's just take a look. All of our tutorials on YouTube are free and full length, but if you really love the idea of botanical painting but are not sure where to start, then you may want to head over to our Patreon where we post brand new botanical painting tutorials every month. We have different membership levels to suit you, and of course, you won't find any of our Patreon tutorials here on YouTube and they are free of those annoying ads. So if you want to learn how to paint botanicals that you can be proud of, then I will link it in the description below and it's also a way for you to support my channel. So if that's something that interests you, I will link it in the description box underneath this video along with all the other information that you will need. So if you are enjoying this video, I'd really appreciate you hitting that like button so that more people can see it and enjoy it too. So thank you so much for that. And of course, you may also want to consider subscribing and hitting that bell notification. That way you won't miss new uploads every single Tuesday. Just to let you know that we're also on Instagram at The Wonders of Watercolour, as you can see here. So do join us there. And um, we do try to post daily kind of um, what's coming up on YouTube and some behind the scenes stuff and some fun with reels and that kind of stuff. So do join us there too. So by working on each petal in turn like this, it gives you full control of your paint. So I'm using Carmine here for the darker value, but as I said earlier on, you could probably get away with using permanent rose, but this just gave it a little bit of an extra boost. So the permanent rose that I'm using is from Windsor & Newton and the Carmine is Daniel Smith. But like I said at the start, it doesn't matter what brand you use, you probably will have something very similar within your own kit. But if you are really struggling to match your colours, then drop me a comment below and I'll do my best to help you. We want you to be able to join in with the tutorials, no matter what paints you have. 
You can see that I've added a few more details here by just drawing in the colour with my paintbrush just to give it that shape of the petal and once again just blending out those hard edges with my number one size brush. You can see that I haven't taken those secondary layers all over the first layer because I wanted to have that kind of three-dimensional look. So back to the carmine and just dropping in some of that darker value to give it a little bit more oomph. Just work on each petal slowly and carefully. You can really take your time with this type of painting. There's no rush, just really stress free. Okay, so everything's now dry and this time I'm going to mix a puddle of sap green. This sap is from Windsor & Newton and together with a little bit of perylene violet which gives it a bit of darkness. The perylene violet is also from Windsor & Newton. You can see how it's made it this kind of um, like a dark olive green tone. Now that that first wash is completely dry, this time we're going to do some negative painting, which simply means that I'm going to be taking the, the first wash over the pen, right up to that pencil line like this, as you can see. So both of these um, outside edges are to the pencil line, and then right to the edge of the frame that I've drawn. Just one really, really simple wash there. And picking up that mix of perylene and violet and sap green right up to the pencil line here but when we take it down we're going to be leaving a tiny bit of a gap I'm just mixing a tiny bit of sap there so this time we're going to be leaving this tiny little gap between these two elements here this will form the vein that we see within the leaf now don't worry if it's too bright at the moment we can sort that out a bit later but we do need to get this in place so leaving this tiny little gap, you notice that I'm using this kind of patting and dragging motion. It helps you better control the paint. So leaving that tiny little gap and take the rest of the color to the outside edge. Just continuing the process until this is complete. I'm using a mixture of perylene with sap green and sap green on its own. I wanted to vary the colours a little bit. You can see once again this is wet on dry and just continuing the process until the entire leaf is finished. So this is a real kind of introduction into botanical painting and we have actually done quite a few of the um, botanical painting tutorials here on YouTube. Um, so if you'd like to take a look, I'll stick a playlist at the end of this video for you to click through and have a look after you've watched this one. And on the top leaf here, I'm just taking some of the paint down the central vein right on the outside upper edge here, wet on dry once again. Cleaning my brush and I'm just taking what's left on my brush to blend in this colour on the other side of this particular leaf. Now I'm not taking the colour all the way through to the top and using the same process that I did on the bottom left hand leaf, I'm applying the sap green to the outside edge of this leaf and leaving a gap in the middle as before. I'm also going to take this colour on the stem.
I'm just dropping in some of the dark green here while that paint is still wet. So once again, everything is completely dry and we need to take a look at the middle. So we have a mixture of cadmium lemon along with quinacridone burned orange. Quinacridone burned orange is by Daniel Smith, but if you don't have that, you could use something like a burned umber. I've mixed three petals here, burnt um, um, three petals here. We have cadmium lemon going into the central area, as you can see me doing here. Cadmium lemon mixed with quinacridone burnt orange at the top there. And on the left hand side, we have quinacridone burnt orange on its own. I'm just applying this as our first wash, as you can see here to the areas that you can see me painting in. So this is just by using cadmium lemon on its own. I've mixed a tiny bit of cadmium lemon with sap green here, and I'm just taking the very, very, very watery wash over the stamen, as you can see, or is it the anther? I can never remember what these are called, so if you know, let me know in the comments below. The stamen or anther here. So we have a mix of quinacridone burnt orange and cadmium lemon, and using this kind of lovely orangey, pale orangey color, I'm taking it over some of the stamen like this all over this one and just to the outside edge of one or two of them and I'm mixing Perilee and Violet now. I need a separate puddle of this and this is a good, really good colour to darken up some of the elements on the stamen and anther but while we're waiting for that first wash to dry I've decided to add some of the pattern that we see on the petals. This is Perilee and Violet and I'm using my number one brush just to do these kind of wiggly dots as you can see me doing here. Now I'm not going strictly true to the photograph while I'm doing these otherwise I'd be here forever and a day so I'm just adding them sort of randomly but trying to keep them in line. They almost form a kind of um, V shape sort of in a line. Um, just keep an eye on that and also as you hit the outside edge you might want to add a bit more water as I've done here so that they look a little bit more natural and not one solid colour. And I'm also taking a little bit of the uh, Perilee and Violet down the middle to strengthen up that tone. As I was working through, I did some of these off camera of course, but as I was working through I did add another puddle of uh, permanent rose and I also painted some of the some of these little dots in using permanent rose, but I did that a little bit later on. So carrying on, um, using my sap green with a little bit of cadmium lemon, I'm now applying this to the middle parts as you can see here where we initially put the cadmium lemon on its own but I don't take the colour all the way to the end, I leave that little bit of lemon showing like this. So we're just going to put a sort of triangular shape in the middle of this element that we can see here. So while I'm waiting for that to dry I flit over to my cronacridone burned orange and my cadmium lemon mix and just are using this on the outside of some of the stamen like this. This kind of forms our mid-tone on these parts. Kind of keep them out of that middle bit because we've already got that pale lemon tone in there. And the same on this one here. This is my number one brush. So here you can see me applying a really watery mix of the Perilee and Violet with a tiny bit of green. Um, this is a very, very watery mix here and I just felt it needed a little bit of something on some of the petals. So here's my other palette that I have hidden on the bottom here. And also applying this colour to some of the shady areas that you can see underneath the petals that are curving over. Just felt that it was looking a little bit too white. So that's just Perilee and Violet, Sap Green in a really watery consistency. So just applying it to the parts that you can see me doing here, it just makes it look a little bit more sort of natural. So just blending it through as usual, just with some plain water. 
and adding a tiny bit of detail there. We're back to, this is um, quinacridone burned orange. So now that these are dry, we can go back to our quinacridone burned orange mix um, in a fairly thick consistency and I'm applying it over the areas that we um, we applied earlier on and of course these being completely dry. This time I'm not adding it everywhere just to sort of certain elements of it and blending it through. You can see that that gives us a kind of lovely graduated wash even for our smaller tiny areas that, like, that you can see me doing here. It just makes it look a little bit more realistic than having that solid colour. Just by using the tip of my brush, I can have full control of the paint and this wiggly motion that I'm doing just gives it a little bit of realism. Just by, it just creates these kind of gaps in between these little, they're almost like a sort of hot dog shape, aren't they? So just carry on working through, blending it as before to make it look that really soft blur. And again, I'm just using my number one brush here just to create this kind of wiggly line and just leave in a few gaps so you can see that initial wash underneath. And the same on this part. So now I'm using Perilene Violet to outline these um, little stamen. By mixing the quinacridone burnt orange on its own, I felt that it wasn't quite dark enough to add some of these darker values. So we can kind of cheat by using quinacridone, sorry, we can sort of cheat by using Perilene Violet, which gives the illusion of that quinacridone burnt orange being really, really deep without noticing that it's actually a kind of really dark maroon color that we have. So that's a little tip for you there. If you want to darken some of your colors, you can cheat a little bit by adding a completely different color that gives it that kind of look of it being that color, if that makes sense. So this is just perylene violet on its own over the initial washes of quinacridone burnt orange. We're back to Perilene Violet and Permanent Rose and this time I'm just going to add a few more details like this. Just wanted to add the Permanent Rose here and there. I didn't want these dots or patterns on the Stargazer Lily to look too flat and by adding a little bit of variation it just makes it look a little bit more natural. And I'm just adding a little bit of detail to some of the dots here to strengthen them up. Working from my tiny little palette here. I'm just adding these little dots. You can see the kind of motion that I'm using with my brush and strengthening up that middle part here. So we have sap green with a tiny bit of quinacridone burnt orange. I'm starting to outline the filaments now. I think that's what they're called. If you don't, <laughs> once again, if you're, if I'm wrong, please let me know in the comments. So just taking this color and outlining the filaments like this, just take, taking my number one brush, just to give them a tiny bit of shape like this, but be very, very careful here. Make sure that your paint is watery enough, you don't want them to look unnatural. I'm just blending that through. So that's quinacridone burnt orange with the sap green that you can see there and I'm adding it to some of the filaments like this and to the central part here. Okay, just make sure that you use a tiny bit of paint at a time. You don't want to flood your paper with paint, just use a tip of the brush and then just blend it through. The same method as before, even works on tiny, tiny areas. So this is my number six round. And because we have too much of a gap on these negative painted shapes here, I'm just using a plain water glaze just to take that paint everywhere. Now you don't have to do this if you're nervous about um, 
flooding your paper with paint. But if you use a really, really light touch and everything's completely dry, it will kind of merge those colors together and get rid of that really stark negative space. It may be that once it's dry, you need to just go over one or two of them to enhance that color, but it's a great way of merging your colors together. And I'm doing the same. I'm adding some perillion violet and sap green to this upper leaf here. And once again, blending it through to give it a little bit more form. Using my number one brush, cleaning my brush and blending it through as before. But this time with whatever's left on my brush, I'm going to take it over that really bright central vein because it is once again looking a little bit too stark. You can see me doing that in a moment by adding a tiny bit more green here to the upper part of the stem. This time I'm just using it on the top and blending it through just to give it a little bit of dimension. Wiggling my brush like this. see I've just used that um, sort of light wash on the middle of that section here. So we have the same color as before here we have sap green with a tiny bit of perilly and violet so just wanted to add a bit of detail on this one just like that. Just really really light touch I just wanted a little bit of detail on this leaf and once again making sure that everything's blended together by using my soft damp brush. And this is perillion violet with sap once again, this time outlining some of the filaments at the base, just to give them a little bit of definition. And blending it through. I'm also adding some of this color to these adjoining petals because I felt that they were, they just needed a, a little bit of something because it looked like it was just floating. So we just added some of that there. I'm also using the perillion violet to outline this petal as well. So adding some more perillion violet to the mix just to enhance some of the elements here and I'm going to be adding a little bit more green with perillion violet once that bottom leaf is dry to enhance a few bits here and there. So we've still got a few minutes left on this video. I'm going to stop talking and let you watch me in peace. Remember to stay right until the end where you can pause the video, screenshot the reference photograph and the simple line drawing that I've supplied you with so that you can print them out and join in as ever. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to hit that like button if you've enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Thank you.